Good morning, everyone. My name is Ferris, and today we'll be talking about authentication. So the goals of today's lesson is to, number one, understand the importance of authentication, and number two, learn how authentication can be implemented. So to better understand what is authentication, it can be useful to paint a picture, the difference between authentication and authorization. Authentication is your ID. You are who you say you are, and everyone can verify that identity as a fact. An example would be your bus card. Your bus card is saying you as who you are, and everyone can verify your identity using your bus card. Authorization, on the other hand, is having permission to access certain restricted resources using your authenticated identity. So as an example, when you tap your bus card onto a bus card reader, that reader is granting your bus card access to a building based on your authenticated identity. So again, authentication is your identity and authorization is having access to a restricted resource based on that identity. In the context of cybersecurity, authentication falls down to the OS, more specifically the TCB, the Trusted Computing Base, to verify your identity before you are authorized access to a resource that you example. Alice here is trying to access a database that is protected and secret. No one else should be able to access it but Alice. So over here, when she goes through the process of accessing that database, the OS should be able to verify Alice's identity as Alice and not, for example, Bob or anyone else. Evil Bob here should not be able to authenticate himself as Alice um, and consequently, should not be authorized to access that database. So how is authentication implemented? It falls down to three categories. Number one, something that the user has. Number two, something that the user knows, a PIN or a password, something that only the user and only the user knows, not anybody else. And finally, number three, something that the user is, this is your biometrics your iris scan, your face, your fingerprint, something about your physical entity that distinguishes you from other people. Okay, let's stop here for a quiz. So an attacker correctly guesses Alice's password and logs in as her. This is known as an authentication. A, false positive or B, true positive. I kind of already gave the answer um, over there for a short while, but the answer is false positive. So over here, an attacker as another person that is an authentication failure and consequently that is an authentication false positive that is something that we do not want so now that we've talked about the basics of authentication let us talk about how to actually implement authentication and uh, we're just going to talk about the password based authentication so you have a number of users they're trying to log into your date to your website how do you verify their identity using a combination of your username and password how do you store their passwords the most naive way to do this is to literally store the plain text list of passwords inside the database for each user alice keys in one two three four five inside the website form that is compared to what is literally stored inside the database and see whether it matches this is good as long as we keep the database we know how well that turns out so what happens when the uh, password database got leaked, either due to a, an external cybersecurity attack or just a disgruntled employee accessing something that they should not have? That is a security breach over there. It's as easy as just getting the password database and getting all of the um, user's password along with it. That is literally the worst way that you can store the passwords. So let us try to scramble what is in the password database. Let us try to encrypt the contents inside the database using a super secret encryption key. So every time the user logs in, every time Alice puts in one, two, three, four, five, that one, two, three, four, five is encrypted into this random string of characters that we can decrypt later um, to form the plain text. So next time Alice logs in, 
shaky zone one, two, three, four, five, that is encrypted and compared to what is inside the database. This is better than the last method, but it just kicks the problem down the road. Instead of having to keep the database a secret entity, we're now forced to figure out a way to keep the encryption key a secret entity, which is literally the same problems uh, that we encountered in the first method. So let's move on to a better method. Thinking about it, do we really need to be able to decrypt the whatever is inside the database into a plain text form? The answer is we do not. So we come to this concept of hashing. Hashing is a mathematical operation that scrambles a given string of characters to a unique uh, to another scrambled random string of characters in such a way that it cannot be undone. So once you scramble this, once you hash this string, you cannot unhash it back. A good hashing algorithm will produce a unique output for each unique input, and it should not, it should be mathematically invisible to undo the operation. This is much better than the last method, but it comes to a problem when the user keys when when the user uses a simple password like one two three four five. By definition, one two three four five will produce the same hash every time. So if you know this, you can just keep a pre-computed hash table known as a rainbow table and just compare what is inside the database and see whether there are any common hashes. With the with knowing the common hashes, you'll know the common plain text input. So better than the last two methods, but still not good enough. So if we cannot make the user put in a complicated password, let us make the password more complicated for them. Let us add a random string of characters to the password known as the salt. So the user enters one, two, three, four, five. We enter a random salt value and hash the output to keep it inside the database. So now inside the database, you have the user ID, you have the hash, I'm sorry, you have the salt and you have the hash. So when the user enters one, two, three, four, five, we put in the plain text salt value, add it to the user input, and hash the output and compare it with the um, cat value inside the database. This is much better than the last three methods, and it is the method commonly used nowadays. This forces the attacker to um, to having to brute force every possible user input to find the correct hash output. So there is this idea that you can actually stop them from um, brute forcing by adding another uh, salt known as the pepper that you keep secret and not part of the database. So now in addition to the salt, you add in this secret value and then you hash that, um, that output and keep it inside the database. This is good. This is theoretically uh, much better than the last four methods, but it begs the question of maintainability since you now have to keep this pepper value a secret value. And we've talked about the dangers of keep of having to keep a value secret. Talk review packages. I'll stop here for a moment if you have any questions. Okay, so quick quiz. A hash function should meet the following requirements, A, B, or C. Five seconds. And the answer is B and C. It should produce different hash values for different passwords, and it should be very hard to compute. So TLDR, for developers, authentication is complicated. You might as well just use established services like OFO, which already does all of the password mechanism storage for you or just simply use sign in with Google, literally kicking the problem to Google. And for users, use a password manager. Use a password manager. So summary, you've learned today how authentication is a key requirement and the various types of authentication and how to implement those authentication. That is all from me. Thank you very much and I hope you have a good day.